This is a continuation of our pre-recorded series in zoology. So uh, last meeting we, we had discussed the, the introduction to zoology, the ecological and the evolutionary perspectives, how we did um, the science of zoology had um, different subdisciplines. But before we understand the variety of ideas in zoology, we need to first understand what are the typical basic and functional unit of life which are the cells so um, by the next slides the cells we will talk about tissues organs and different organ systems for us to understand the complexity of your animal so this is a photomicrograph of your skeletal muscle tissue a muscle tissue that um, has um, a four okay one of the four major tissue types will be discussed in the pre uh, succeeding slides so because all of the organisms are made up of cells, the cell is the, again the fundamental to an understanding of zoology as, as the atom is an understanding of chemistry. So we have to basically be um, legible about the indivisible units. Okay, The indivisible units in chemistry are atoms. Um, in zoology, we have to understand that our cells are the components of living systems or living organism. Okay? That uh, the cell theory states that um, all cells are came from pre-existing cells, okay? And um, this hierarchy of your biological organization, the cell is the basic, okay, organization of matter that exhibits all the properties of life. So in year 2.1, um, we have here a complexity for decreasing and increasing complexity. And in the middle, um, we, we have to divide it for living and non-living. So we'll start with atoms are creating simple molecules our simple molecules are creating macro or big molecules these big molecules are creating membranes organelles cells tissues organs organ systems and an animal so as you go ahead in uh, starting from the cell the living entities of your of your animal um, they are increasing in complexity but as you go uh, going back to your basic um, unit of chemistry which are the atoms it has decreasing complexity. So what are cells? Okay, It's a big question. What are cells? Who discovered them? It was discovered by Robert Hooke as he was um, studying the cork cells um, in a, in, in a self-made microscope. Uh, it was also being uh, discussed uh, by, by Anton van Leeuwenhoek when he started to study the small particles of living organisms in the water sample so he can refer that one as animal cues okay in a lot of different um, histo um, history of, uh, of information coming from the medieval Europe when they started to discover the cells which are the basic unit of life um, we have different uh, mechanisms that are happening inside your cell we have reproduction we have metabolism okay but first we will study what are the two different types of cells so we have prokaryotes and eukaryotes for prokaryotes they are basic i mean they don't perform um, complex machineries as compared to eukaryotes okay for prokaryotes they are mostly bacteria and the, the two domains of um, your prokaryotes are the archaea and the eubacteria for archaeans they are the most um, primitive okay i say the ancestral um, of all living organisms on earth so they started with living in the very harsh environments uh, volcanic ash okay um, steam meth um, methane environment they are living in the most ho hot and most cold environments they are can withstand different um, environmental pressures and so on they share a common characteristics with you bacteria for you bacteria they are the true bacteria they are bacteria that are found inside your body um bacteria that helps the the the, the fertilization of your um plants etc but in animals um the bacteria is is is, is a helpful organism that um, aids in digestion and some of your metabol metabolic processes okay and the third domain is eukarya eukarya is a a, a big domain and it, it involves the animals okay they are larger okay then uh, prokaryotic cells and much more complex since animals are and protists uh, protists are unicellular cellular organisms um, we will be emphasizing on the animal cells as to the discussion okay so typically we have here the 
true membrane bound nucleus with, uh, uh, which is absent in prokaryote, uh, DNA complex with histones, absent also in prokaryote, okay, and nucleolus which are absent, and it doesn't have uh, mitosis which is the, the somatic cell division, okay. Um, it don't uh, perform meiosis, okay, which is very unique in the eukaryote because the, 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 the fusion of gametes was happening from the parents uh, going down to your offsprings and they were able to transfer the DNA or the blueprint of life from generations to generations. We have also a differentiation, okay, so for, for prokaryote it's like rudimentary and for eukaryote uh, it has a tissues. Okay, different types of tissues. We have four types of tissues. We'll discuss later on, and uh, these tissues are making up different organs of your body. So again, eukaryotes have membrane-bound organelles. It means to say, um, the organelles found in your cell are membraned, and they are um, unique with each other because they they are contained with each other. They have little systems between an organelle. Let's say the mitochondria has a membrane. Uh, we have the Golgi bodies, we have the nucleus, we have the, uh, we have the plasma membrane, they are, are contained with membranes. So the machinery that's happening inside your cell, is very eukaryotic cell, is a very complex because uh, the network of your specialized structures called we call microfilaments, okay, um, and the microtubules are organized into a cytoskeleton. So it gives this, uh, the cell shape and allows intracellular movements. So in your eukaryotic cells, you have three basic parts. The first is the plasma membrane, okay? What is a plasma membrane? It's the cell membrane, okay? The outer boundary of the cell. It separates the internal metabolic events from the environment and allows your cell to proceed in organized and controlled ways. The plasma membrane is um, having a specific receptors for external molecules that alter the cell's function. So they have receptors found embedded onto their um, surface. Cytoplasm is a fluid-like uh, part of your cell which is suspending all the organelles of your cell and we call that cytosol, okay, the semi-fluid um, part of your cytoplasm. And the nucleus is the cell's control center. It's like the prime minister or the president or the city mayor of a certain um, city or a certain place. It, it involves the command center, okay, the control center. It has a chromosome which is giving house to the part of your cell which is the DNA which it codes for instructions for the for the for the transfer of genes. And it's also a has a nucleoplasm which is semi-fluid material found in your nucleus. So all cells vary much in form and function. We don't have a typical type of cell. So this special picture will show you an idealized version of a eukaryotic cell and one of its most comp uh, component parts. So for a general anim animal cell, this is the structure. Uh, we will be discussing um, different structures later one by one. So this is um, an exaggerated uh, tip, uh, sketch of your animal cell. The oblong shape. Um, has a center of uh, the nuclear envelope and the nucleus. It has a different branched, okay, um, of um, organelles studded with ribosomes, this ER in the plasma particulum, and so on. So we will be discussing more of that in the next few more slides.